Hi guys, welcome back again. Uh, I'm still addressing some of those important questions that are definitely being asked or we are being asked by most of you in the comment section. I know I cannot get one by one sometime, but you'd find that there are also some other people that have the similar problems in one way. Someone asked me about what are the basic components or what you should know, what you should find on your contract. In case, how do you differentiate that this is the contract, this is another form of writing, and this is definitely what I'm signing for. That is what definitely I need to let you know. A contract is just a mutual agreement or an agreement that binds the employer and the employee in one way. When you look at the contract itself, this contract will bear what you call different basics. Components. What would you call the components that what will show or what will show to you that this is a contract that you've signed or oh, this is going to be what you call a real contract that you've signed with this company or with this sponsor first of all we shall look at that contract must be asserted by the ministry of labor in Qatar. yes I know some of us, most of us, we've got those contracts that are being signed by only our employer and given to us by human resources. They just wrote to us and give us those contracts. But according to the law now, according to the law, all the contracts, all employees must have those contracts that are asserted or are being stamped by the Ministry of Labor. And the only way that you can get that contract is getting to the Ministry of Labor website. Just need to put in your what you call your QID. After putting your QID, then you'll include the mobile number. That mobile number, you receive what you call an OTP number. That OTP number is what you'll insert in the system or insert where it is required. Then your document will be retrieved. Once you check your document, it will either say you have a contract or to give you a PDF contract or it will say you have no contract with the ministry. And what does it mean? That means your employer has not yet submitted your contract with the Ministry of Labor. So definitely, as a person, you can start from there. Either to start demanding it, either to start demanding it or reminding what you call your employer or your sponsor about your contract. Yes, let us try to look at what is on that contract. Yes, before also we look at what bears on that contract. What do you need to do as a person before you sign any contract or before you sign any document? Read thoroughly and understand that document you are signing. What I like with the government of Qatar here is that that document will be either in two the contract has to be in two languages has to be in english and has to be in arabic so for those arabic speakers they can still read and understand then those english speakers can still re also read and understand where the only problem comes from is people who sign with what you call panic you end up signing a document that you've not read which has what you call terms that definitely are going to coil you or tag you somewhere. Unlike like I talked about someday, that some of us will find that we get contracts. Our contracts, as we are coming to the country, it is only two years. And when did you sign a document and you don't know, you don't, you don't want to read the super excitement, you find you are signing a contract of unlimited, which is five years. And you cannot change unless the five years get off. Or you have to resign and exit the country and return on a fresh visa. Which sometimes some people have always also got into what you call trouble. Because they don't know how definitely they have to deal with that. Or definitely they do not know how specifically how to go about with that. Which brings a lot of incursion within the, the groups in any way or the other. Okay, let us try to look at what happens or what should happen. First of all, it should have what you call the employer's name of the work. Yes, first of all, that contract should be at the company. Then it should also be at the company that you're going to work for. It should bear your name, not someone else's name. 
Why would you sign a contract that has someone else's name, not in your name? Then that is not your contract. That is crucially. Don't believe that's your contract. And sincerely, if I would be me, I would not even put on a hand on something. Even if my name is Pete Longry, even if my name has one letter missing, I would not, I would not always want to put a signature on my name which is misspelled or even something that does not have my name. For what reason? Because that is normally an agreement that binds you. So meaning that the mistake you make first, getting out of that abandonment of that agreement, it will be another problem for you in any way or the other. Yes, look at the worker's name. It will bear your name. It will bear your qualification. Some of us, you have the qualification as a security guard. You have a qualification as a general cleaner. You have a qualification as a housekeeping. You are attendant. Any qualification that is being recruited for. Remember, casually, we have what you call the normal jobs. We have the casual jobs. Then we have the professional jobs. All those kind of contra, all those kind of professions will have to be bare or they will have to add to bear on that contract. Then it will also bear what you call the date of conclusion of the contract. That's where I always tell you where it comes in. The conclusion of the contract. Is it a limited contract? Is it unlimited contract? Or is an open ended contract does it have a limited specific period of time for you to come to serve in that country to serve into that company or no or not then what is that date it should be clearly stipulated on that top then we look at the nature of the work that you are going to do the nature of the work and the place of the work we are going to do the work from the nature of the work we may talk about are you going to be a cleaner are you going to be a security guard are you going to be what we call a helper are you going to be a driver it should specifically specify the nature of the work that you are going to do and where exactly is that going to be it's going to be in doha is it going to be in Qatar? is it going to be in saudi arabia is it going to be in jordan is it going to be bahrain is it going to be in usa is it going to be in uk is it going to be in france so it should bear that place then also, the date of commitments. What we call the date of commitment? When are you starting the work? Which is quite very important. Yes, the date of commitment of my contract, it will sign, it start exactly when I enter the country. That is well and good. That is what part of the contract says. Then the duration of the contract, if it is fixed, limited, open-ended, or unlimited contract. That has to be that is where the problem comes from. For most of us, or most of you, you've not paid what you call close attention to what you call the type of contract you sign. So you end up, instead of what you call a fixed contract, you end up open, uh, signing for what you call an employer. Although to some extent, or to, to some extent, there are some employers that have turned into what you call a fixed contract. Application, they double check the documents, and you find yourself website you have what you call an contract in one way. That's why it's normally very good for you to keep the two copies. One copy of the contract you sign in your country, then the second copy that you sign when you enter the country should be exactly like the same copy you sign in your country. Such that there is no alternation. What we call is no alternation in the date and the time and the type of contract and when the duration that you're supposed to serve that employer. Then the agreed salary and benefits will have to be on that contract. That will include your flight, will include your food allowance, will include your transportation, housing allowance, uh, your flight ticket, your vacation uh, ticket. All those are kind of the benefits that should be clearly stipulated on that contract. It should be visible. It should be clearly read how much salary you are going to earn, how much that salary that you are going to earn. Yes, it should be clearly stipulated in that contract or on that contract and be readable in all the language. You don't sign something that you don't know in one way or the other. Then it should be important to keep also, lastly, what also you definitely also need to know is what you call the probation period. You should have the probation period of that contract. It should be stipulated. 
Yes, if that probation period that you're going to serve in that company is six months, then it should be clearly written out and on that contract that your probation period is six months or your probation period is three months, depending on what is being agreed between you and your employer. Then clearly, lastly, but not least or lastly, you should keep a copy of yourself. Once you sign that contract and submit, yes, make sure you get, you request a photocopy or you request a copy of that contract. Yes, most employers may not want to give you that copy of that contract at that time, but get all solution or get all ways of why to, to snap a copy shop of a copy of that contract. Such as in case there is a violation of the contract that appears on the Minister of, Web, uh, Minister of Labor website and what contrary that you sign, then that should be a breach of what you call breach of the law or the employer might be, must be answerable because it's breaching what was agreed in one way or the other. Reason being that why we should always keep our copy is just to be well aware. Even if you get a problem, the only thing that's going to bail you out will be a copy of the contract that will ascertain, that will have proof of you in any way or the other. I hope I've tried to share something for you, by the way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, always. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give me that subscribe, okay? Don't forget to share, you know. Let us help one another every single day. Every single day is another day. Let's try to help one another. Uh, remember, it's Mets from the Mets Creation, giving you all the updates and give you all the information to support our hope. Thank you so much. See you again in the next video.